my name is Sakina Mwaka. I'm born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. I'm a Nubian by heritage and by blood. The fashion business, I had interest since I was a child, of course, but I put it in action when I, um, I was in university first year, 2014. So that's when I came up with the Seki Classy franchise. So my Nubian heritage really drove me to incorporate the Nubian style. That was an advice I got from my mother, who told me, do something about your heritage. Show the world that Nubians have style, that Nubians have class, and that Nubians actually exist. So that's how I started. Nested within the vibrant Kibera slums of Nairobi, Kenya, an extraordinary fashion designer is using her talent to preserve the art and culture of Nubian women attires. Meet Sekina Mwaka, a visionary artist dedicated to conserving the rich heritage of her people. So my first step in any designing and stitching or anything, I first sketch the idea that I have in mind. So it could be a simple idea, a complicated idea, it depends on my inspiration. So obviously, as I said earlier, my main inspiration is my, my Nubian heritage. So here what I'm designing is uh, the gemis. The gemis is the dress where, where um, Nubian girls wear on top of the Gurbaba. Nubian ladies, Nubian, Nubian women. So what I do is I creatively come up with either a unique bodice or unique gemis. So I must outline the Gurbaba first. So it gives me some sense of direction of what design exactly am I working on? Nubian women attire has a long and captivating history, reflecting the traditions, values, and beauty of the Nubian people. So usually in all my designs, I, I usually have a headgear, a headpiece. That is my signature look for the Seki Classy designs. I usually have a headpiece. And for the bodies, I must outline the shape of the top that I want. For this case, I want an off-shoulder. These attires celebrate the unique cultural identity of Nubian women, adorned with vibrant colors, intricate patterns, and elegant designs. Here, Si ya kusema ya sherehe, inafaa sisi uwote, mnubi oyote, avai mavazi kama he. Hii inaitua zampeo. Na hii inaitua suksuk. Suksuk ida. Na hii inaitua suksuk ragaptu. Na chini ini kuna gurubaba. Asa yu mavazi ni ya wanubi, tunavaa kwa sababu, tunaishi kwa boma moja, na babu, na baba. Asa yu mavazi ni ya ishima. Ukivaa kutoka juba kachini, unonekana mtu wa ishima. Watoto kusema ukweli wana sumbuliwa na mazingara. Kwa sababu hata akivaa, ukimtanda vile unumimtanda saa hizi sekina, akitoka hapo inge kama haende harusini ataulizo. Kwa ni kuna harusi leo? Atakiwa haone kana na mevaa kapaipu, na kanino, psaimu zote za mwili za onekana, na katika mavazi ya kimila, sana sana na haifadhi psaimu za mwili za manamuke. What I want people to identify with my brand as much as it's based on heritage and everything, I also want a signature look that if you see Seki Classy on the streets, you recognize it because of the headpiece. I need to know specifically what sort of hairstyle this model will, will wear, for instance, on the runway or in a showcase. So the hairstyle that I'm envisioning is the the Nubian design, what I have on right now, the same, same design, is the same that I want the model to wear with this outfit. You must specify the type of hairstyle that goes with a, 
with a look. For instance, if I want to have beads, already decided that I have a, an off shoulder design, I add an applique at the top so that the piece is not as boring. So I add an applique. Then it goes all the way to the three quarter, three quarter sleeve. Then here I'll add some flare. So my idea for the skirt is a circular skirt because um, when you're doing a Nubian attire, it has, the skirt has to be circular because you've noticed the, the gurbaba is a very, very chunky fabric and it's heavy. So whatever that goes on top of the gurbaba has to be something that is circular to accommodate the width of the gurbaba. I go to the top, we must add the top for purposes of um, purposes of sticking to our heritage and our style. So this is a fabric that you throw on top, which is called the tob. This imp inspiration basically came from the original Nubian style. Sekina Mwaka's passion for Nubian women attires extends to every detail of the creation process, from hand selecting of the finest fabrics to the intricate embroidery and beadwork. Every stitch represents a dedication to excellence. The best design that I ever did was um, a piece uh, that transforms in several styles. The, the one piece, could, you could wear it in four different ways. So it's, um, it's more of a piece that tells a story. It's an avant-garde piece that tells a story. That was the best piece I ever did. Um, I remember when I was showcasing it, I always remember that moment. When I was showcasing that piece at Michael Joseph Center, I remember the applause I got. The, the level of attention to details that I did for that particular piece, I still remember till today. So, and how it impacted my creativity is, uh, I always knew that I should embrace my creativity. I should not be afraid of judgment. I should not be afraid of people thinking that this outfit is too complex for me or this outfit is too too out there for me. So I embraced that because that is um, a part of my character. I love things that stand out. I love um, outfits that stand out. By using smartphone apps, she explores digital design possibilities allowing her to experiment with patterns, colors, and styles, while still preserving the essence of Nubian art. Sekina embraces innovation and combines traditional craftsmanship with modern technology. You know, the younger generations nowadays, they tend to deviate so much from the heritage and culture. So what I do, I try to modernize it as much as possible. You see, for instance, um, the gemis, the gemis is transitioning slowly, and I believe I'm a very strong and a big influence when it comes to that. Um, there's a specific way that Nubians used to do it. They used to have um, a specific de design that they all stick to it. But now what I've done is I've, I've modernized it in terms of, so, so that the younger generation will, will identify with the gemis. Same goes to the gurbaba. How I, how I place it, how I stitch it, I've modernized it. I've made it easier for them to accommodate the gurbaba. So I believe it's a very big influence when it comes to the younger generation. They become intrigued, they become um, interested that they can actually look modern and at the same time look traditional. Next step after the illustration bit is the cutting process to align where I want to cut. So I don't use a chalk because the chalk leaves stains. Money is not the intrinsic value, the main intrinsic value when it comes to my passion, when it comes to my love for designing. The one thing that I want is authenticity when it comes to the designing. Majority of my clients, anyone I've ever worked with, knows very well that I believe in my creativity as a fashion designer. So if someone comes to me, let's say for instance, for a wedding, 
to dress them up for a wedding. Uh, first thing, the first thing I would do is I would want to know their sense of style. What type of person are they? Are they extravagant? Are they bold? Are they are they like simple? So if they already they already know what they want, then I come up with something creative. I add it to the twist. So that is the first thing I do when I meet clients. And the second thing I do, I usually advise my clients to never come with an idea in mind. You know, I don't encourage copying when it comes to my brand. You know, someone might come with a phone and tell you, I want this, like what Louis Vuitton did or Versace did, but I really restrict myself. I tell them, I have to come up with a design if it's Seki Classy. It has to be something that I've come up with and it's custom made for you and you've never seen it anywhere else. Mostly uh, now I focus on culture more because I believe um, I need to, to be a voice of the Nubian fashion. I need to be a voice of the Nubian attire. Uh, as you've noticed, there's no Nubian fashion designer that is out there that is representing the Nubian outfits. And I really want to do that. I want to, to be the first designer that represents Nubians to the world. My favorite color has to be gold. Majority of my outfits, as you you can you will tell later, are embroidered or either have a golden chain or have a golden fabric. That is my favorite color. Sakina Mwaka understands the importance of passing down her knowledge to the younger generation. Through workshops and training sessions, she empowers aspiring artists from the Kibera slums to learn the art of Nubian fashion design. Nubian women are playing a big, big role when it comes to the preservation of culture. In, in the sense that you will find them going to weddings, you'll find them going to events, and the first outfit, the first thing that comes to their mind is the Nubian attire. They believe that is the only attire that will stand out when it comes to fashion, when it comes to class and elegance. So they've played a very huge role in terms of preservation of culture. So they actually inspire younger generations and they inspire men, they inspire children to appreciate. So you find that once a Nubian woman is interested in knowing how does a woman look like in the Nubian culture, how does a woman dress, how does a woman in the Nubian culture present herself to the world. They become interested in also knowing how does a man dress, how does a man present himself to the world. So they have a very, very big, huge impact in the preservation bit. I am currently uh, mentoring young Nubian girls about their heritage and their culture. So what we do is we, we teach them how we're supposed to dress, how we're supposed to look when you're going for occasions. So the process is, um, the selection is usually they have to be they have to be Nubians, of course. They have to be of Nubian heritage for, the, to, for it to spark that interest in them. So this is how the final product looks like. So it's, um, after this, we have a showcase on the streets for purposes of showing Nubians ways of preserving our culture and also appreciating the type of fabrics and, and stitching that we do. So we, after this, we have a, a street showcase and I always, after I do the finished product, I always take a picture of the outfit and I post it on my socials so that I can get, do the marketing as well as get clients on my social media platforms. So I take a picture of the outfit and I post it on my social media page. So this is the latest edition for my Seki Classy Heritage Edition. You can see the gurbaba, gemis, the tob, but it's uh, in a modernized version. Well, for us to conserve the Nubian heritage, I believe first of the production of the gurbaba. So you, normally what we usually do to get the gurbaba, we usually import it from Uganda. It's not locally made. There is no company that locally makes the gurbaba in Kenya currently. So that is one thing I would really, really want to change because um, 
it takes a lot to just get a good baba and process it in your hands. So the, the fact that you have to import it, the fact that you have to, to really, really look for it, it becomes very expensive. <laughs> Sekina, the Nubian fashion designer from Kibera slums, is not only creating beautiful garments but also nurturing a new generation of artists. Her dedication to preserving the art and culture of Nubian women attires shines brightly, inspiring others to cherish their heritage and embrace their own unique artistic talents. What you wear is how people out there perceive you. So that really sparked an interest in me. I, I, I sort of collaborated the two ideas of how you would sit down and talk to someone and envision how you'd want to, to maybe change how they look or maybe improve how they, they perceive themselves. That is the first um, inspiration. The second one is mostly for my parents, my mom and dad. The amount of hope and belief they have in my collection, in my talent, so that is the second inspiration. They really motivate me so much. What I get from them is the resilience. So in every, in every collection I do, and in every showcase I do, I must incorporate the resilience, the utilitarian nature of it. The first challenge that comes along is the world. The world does not know Nubian fashion. The world does not recognize the Nubian fashion. So it's so much weight on young designers as myself, on our shoulders to put it out there, to make it known, to make it, to make it believable that Nubians actually have a sense of style, they actually have a sense of class. That is the first challenge we have as, I have as a fashion designer in the Nubian society. The second one is the exposure the level of exposure that we get as Nubians. So you see um, these fashion shows that happen in Kenya, let's say the Nairobi Fashion Week and every other big fashion shows that happen in Kenya, they do not incorporate the Nubian fashion. As much as they will incorporate any other tribe in Kenya, they will not incorporate the Nubian fashion. So it's another challenge that we face. Through Sekina Mwaka's visionary work, the art and culture of Nubian women attires continues to thrive ensuring that the vibrant heritage of Nubian people will live on for generations to come. I'm advocating for Nubian culture. I'm advocating for our heritage. I want it to be, to be known. I want it to be spoken about. I want it to be trendy. I want it to be stylish. And the, at the same time, I want to inspire the younger generations in the Nubian community to believe that you can do it as well. Well, modernity has affected Africa as a nation, I think. Because we've all left our traditions behind, except for us Nubians, we have tried, and maybe Maasai. But for us Nubians, we have tried to maintain our culture. Like what I'm wearing right now, it's supposed to be an all-day look. But these days, it's just an occasional look, maybe for weddings or things like that. But our mothers and our grandmothers, they still wear the same look f throughout the day, because this is how we are supposed to look important thing when it comes to foundation of culture and heritage is family. Um, in that process where you conserve and preserve your culture, your family has to be a support system. They have to be the people that mentor you and drive you towards your ambition in terms of preservation of that heritage. So I believe um, they're the, my biggest motivation when it comes to that. <laughs> The sound of the machine is what inspired Sekina Mwaka into fashion and design industry, sitting close to her mom who is a fashion uh, enthusiast as well as a cultural conservative, helped her to tap into the talent. Now she's turning the Nubian fabric into not just money but conserving the Nubian heritage. For Culture Quest, I'm Levis Msumba.
after President William Ruto in October last year lifted the